after they recover. That was an enormous number of people who would range in the thousands and thousands in a city like New York. You basically have to go to everyone who had typhoid fever and check their stools after they got better. That's impossible. So the Department of Health focuses on those who pose the greatest risk, food handlers. The Health Department passed a resolution that became a law of the land that anybody who handled food in New York City had to be tested and had to be tested regularly. They were given cards, so they were known to the Health Department, and then they were given instructions about what they should and shouldn't do. And they were supposed to report back periodically to the Health Department to get checked on. They caught very few healthy carriers that way, and it was a very expensive program, as you can imagine, all the food handlers there are in New York City. Most healthy carriers escape detection unless they cause an outbreak. On March 1915, typhoid fever strikes the city's prestigious low maternity hospital. Twenty-five doctors, nurses, and staff come down with the disease. Two die. The hospital calls in George Sober. Dr. Cragen telephoned me asking that I come at once to the hospital. When I arrived, he told me he had a typhoid epidemic on his hands. The other servants have jokingly nicknamed the cook. Typhoid Mary. She called herself Mrs. Brown. She was out at the moment, but when I recognized her handwriting, he handed me a letter, from which I saw at once that it was indeed Mary Mallon. Oh, my God. Happy. Happy. Here. Excuse the interruption. Could you please send Geraldo Cruzado here to the registrar's office? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My sympathy begins to erode a bit for her, and I think, what is going through her mind? How can she? <laughs>